good morning, everyone. Um, can I just ask a question first? How many people here are actually awake? <laughs> OK, you guys are doing very well. You've had five nights of partying, at least. And uh, it's amazing to see you here for this panel on ideas, tools, and examples for OpenStack uh, groups. Now, we've got some really, really great guys uh, here this morning. Very credible. They're responsible for organizing some of the best organized user groups in the world and uh, some of the ones with the, the most members. So there are their titles up on the screen, but I thought it would be good just to start off. Uh, guys, take, take 30 seconds, take a minute yourself, and uh, explain what it is you do with the OpenStack community and uh, why people should listen to you. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So uh, my name is Colin McNamara. Uh, I'm a contributor and core reviewer on OpenStack Docs. Uh, Sean and I started a project called OpenStack Training Guides. Uh, with the goal of creating uh, open source uh, learning and uh, training enablement to kind of be able to take a guy from zero to hero. Um, we see uh, other things to do within, within OpenStack is uh, starting to participate more in Neutron and uh, Open Daylight. Sean Roberts, uh, San Francisco Bay Area as well, um, Yahoo. Uh, so we uh, definitely do hackathons, and that's the thing we're probably the most proud of. We're, we also um, work with Mirantis, um, and they help us by running the beginner-oriented meetups. And um, we're working with Cloud Scaling and Seagate. Um, we've been running the more advanced topics out of San Francisco. So, go ahead. Yeah, and I'm uh, Nati Shalom. I'm the uh, CTO and founder of Gigaspaces. Uh, we've been around since 2000, and uh, ever since I've been involved with founding a community uh, it's called IGT in the case of uh, Israel, uh, where we promoted and helped the community to actually share information around grid computing at the time, and later, uh, obviously, when cloud came in around cloud, and now with OpenStack, we obviously, that was a natural fit to uh, do the same thing with OpenStack. Shana McFarlane, I'm with uh, Cisco. I helped uh, co-found and co-organize with Scott Lowe from VMware, the OpenStack Denver uh, meet up and so it's uh, it's grown and been very successful in uh, partnering with uh, surprisingly a large number of companies throughout uh, the the Colorado Front Range area um, that have you know really started to expand their operations and development into OpenStack. So it's been a successful uh, endeavor so far. Uh, I'm Kyle Mestri from Cisco as well, like Shannon. So I'm a Neutron Core developer and also the founder of the Minnesota OpenStack Meetup. Um, we've, I think we've been running the meetup for about a year now as well. We get a lot of new users, a lot of enterprise type users interested in what OpenStack is as well. And I think we're kind of most famous for bringing Best Buy to the last OpenStack summit and letting them talk about what they're doing there. It's very cool. I'm sure you can uh, bask in the credentials that we've got up on stage here. There's also some awesome people in the audience, uh, everyone here. We've got Stefano, who's the other community manager at OpenStack. Martin Kiss is working on a, a new user portal, which we might talk about for a second. We've got Marcelo from Brazil all the way from there, and uh, many other people from around the world. So hopefully, we're going to have a really good discussion. This is a panel for you. Uh, anyone can kind of join in and kind of lead the speakers in a particular direction. Uh, we have got some, some questions uh, prepared, just in case uh, none come from the audience. Uh, would anyone like to start by asking our, our panel a question, or should we go straight into the canned ones? I th oh, oh, wow, question from the front row. So this is something that we had discussed a little bit beforehand as well. Um, I run the uh, meetup group in RTP North Carolina. Um, so one of the things that we're running into is we have a lot of talks that seem to overlap in our various user groups, or at least content that is useful for everybody. Um, you know, our last meetup group was on Solometer, and there's nothing RTP specific about Solometer. You know, so how do we get to a point where we can share content more easily? Yeah, I think that um, obviously with the, the work that a lot of us are actually working on here, um, I, I think edu that knowledge is something to be shared. That knowledge is is, is actually something we should integrate with our source control. Um, I'm not sure if it's appropriate to house it in a certain project or actually create, um, uh, create a Git repo. We're actually posting not only the presentations, the content, the training tools that we're using within the user groups, but also um, find uh, some way of actually capturing um, kind of the structure of some of the hackathons and sharing those. You know, I, I know there's been uh, informal communication between a lot of user groups in the world. 
our people between user groups, I think capturing that in, in source controls might be a good idea. What do you guys think? Yeah, so I 100% I, I agree. I think that's, that's the way to do it because you know, we've got to find a way to, to share all this information. We've been talking about it for a while now. So you know, using the existing tools that we have, kind of like what you and Sean have done with the training stuff, I, mean, I think we could do something similar for the meetup groups. I think it would allow us to kind of help people out and you know, get the next, get the next uh, round of meetup founders up here next time as well, talking about the groups that they've founded. So uh, that's probably something we can bring up with Steph. Um, but in the meantime, uh, the easier ist, <laughs> lack of a better word, because um, it doesn't always work right, is to take a video and uh, um, use it as a, a, a Google Hangout and just put it straight out there and then uh, notify somebody like Steph that it's out there and uh, try to get it on the um, OpenStack channel. Um, that's probably the, the quick and dirtiest way, although Google Hangout doesn't always work, and, and uh, running it that way is kind of painful, so you almost have, have to have somebody help you and, and film you if you can get an additional hand to do that, so. Indeed. I would say that uh, this is probably, for me at least, the biggest challenge of running a community, is getting the, the, the right speakers and the right talks, and I think that large part of my time, at least, is spent around that, because all the rest is logistics and something that it's much easier to control. Uh, getting good speakers is, the, is really the hardest uh, challenge. So I think you bring a, a, the most important point, in, in, in my view, in running a community and a successful community. So the way we kind of try to attract uh, good speakers in, is good speakers wants to speak to an audience that is big and that their voice will be heard. Uh, so if you build a community that looks like that, so for example, if we build an agenda that looks attractive and the website looks professional and they see that there is a lot of activities, then that's something that attract them. Uh, there is uh, nothing uh, else that could replace direct communication, so we actually pinpointing a project that are of interest to the community and try to target the speakers directly and try to actually bring them up. Uh, in every, every project and every, uh, has more than one speaker, so if someone is not available, you could approach more people that actually talked about that, and lucky for us, I think there is uh, over the internet, you could see who is speaking, and there is SlideShare, and there is different ways in which you could measure uh, speaking uh, uh, skills and, and uh, find the right speakers out of the pool, not necessarily pinpoint just one person. Uh, for us, it's a bit of a bigger challenge because we're not in the U.S., so bringing people to Israel is even a bigger challenge. So, so, we, so we do use the internet, even though it's uh, fairly limited, especially because of the time zone issue. Uh, but I think that's kind of the, the mechanism that we found that is uh, relatively working. Uh, this year we actually made a call for paper and we've seen people more and more coming and, and basically submitting good talks themselves. So that was the first year that I didn't have to chase every speaker. They actually came in voluntarily because of that. But that's, in my view, the biggest challenge. Oh, cool. Yeah, I would agree that you know, I think it's it's tough for Scott and I when we did it. You know, in in Denver, the challenge that we have it's it's a very transient IT area. Many of the people that live there actually work on the road, right? They're gone a lot. So, um, a lot of the 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 people that may RSVP for our particular talks uh, may end up at the last minute, not being able to make it, and so they rely very heavily on accessing the content, whether we post it on SlideShare. I mean, some people use Google Hangouts, some people use WebEx. Um, whatever the means, but I think the, the challenge of it is is that right now you have to go to all of the various OpenStack meetups, take a look at their topics, and then find out if that's something that's applicable for your audience, right? And, and if we had a more central, uh, you know, repo type of thing where we could actually, regardless of the tool set you're using, people could more easily search and find content, it would be a lot easier for people in very, very thin markets where they don't have a lot of people physically attending or they can't really get to a good speaker base like you can, you know, in the Valley or, or Austin or something like that. So I'm, I'm, you know, like the suggestion of centralizing that. Yes, I think, I think by the way, that the, uh, the idea of having something in OpenStack.org that actually allows speakers to kind of find those places where they can speak and suggest their talks to more than one group, and we suggested that even to the OpenStack Summit, mm. uh, where speakers would already submit call for papers, they would have a list of where those call for papers would go for, would help the communities to actually get those, those uh, if you like, speakers from the source. 
Indeed. And just as a bit of se a segue, I should point out that we have a community for communities, and we have actually a mailing list, uh, the community mailing list, where if you're interested in any of these topics or want to work together to try and make something like a speaker reg registry reality, sign up to that mailing list and introduce yourself. So I'm um, going to try not to hog the, the whole time slot here, but so I like the idea of having things central. I'm not sure that a Git repo is the way to go. So the problem that we have with the Git repo is that it's very hard to organize information in ways that people can actually find it. But maybe that's something we can take offline. It, it may be that we need something a little more CMS-like. Yeah, specific implementation. I'm not really getting there. Just central somewhere, searchable. You know. And, Agreed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Kind of along those same lines, Mark and others. You know, again, the idea of, of uh, version control is great, and I might show my ignorance here, but you know. Blogs are a huge way that people consume this content, and if there were a way, and, and maybe we already have the vehicle through the foundation, but even if it were just as simple as saying, we're going to publish, uh, you know, links and summaries to to WebEx recordings, Google Hangouts, SlideShare, Speaker Deck presentations, notes taken, whatever, any or all of the above, it would be a super simple way in my mind for anybody who's interested in consuming that content, consume it without having sort of any sort of pre-existing knowledge on systems or processes or procedures. Well, yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that, by the way. And there's the community newsletter that goes out that, you know, it's, it's a lot of work to aggregate that. You know, I think that maybe we should, um, as community leaders, members, um, maybe focus on finding a way to easily tag. And, and so it, it's searchable, it's automatic, it comes up, easy to curate. And so we kind of lowered the barrier to entry to, to using, um, you know, the, the open stack site or the, commu the, ma the community mailer to um, expand that voice. Perhaps leveraging um, any of the RSS aggregation platforms. So I'm, I'm hearing uh, a lot of planet, technical... Uh, planet open stack meetup type mm. you know, scenario, right? I'm hearing a lot of technical implementation details, talking about aggregates and tagging, this kind of thing. It might be time to, to move on from this particular topic. Perhaps we can zoom out uh, a little bit if you guys feel like uh, to the high level and maybe start uh, at the very high level about why you got involved in community and why it's important to you. Uh, things like how do you think, what is the, the mission of a, a user group? I like to share. <laughs> so, uh, and it, it, I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but that, that really is the basis of what we're doing with the user groups. We're, um, providing a location for people to show up that want to figure out what's going on, uh, various different levels of experience that want to find out what's going on with OpenSAC. And so we share what we know. And if we can't, if we don't know it and we can't find it, then we'd find somebody that can help them. Um, so the, the training stuff that's, um, that Colin and I are working on are nothing more than uh, we were getting a lot of the similar questions from a lot of the other user groups and a lot of uh, similar questions at different times from different people showing up. So. We thought it just made sense to not re keep repeating the same answers over and over again, but start to write it down and curate it. So, go ahead. Yeah, so for me, usually I, I've done it in several, of, let's say, waves, as I mentioned, from grid to cloud and now DevOps and OpenStack. The, re the places in which I plug in is usually when a technology become a movement, uh, a movement, a people movement, a culture movement, uh, much more than a technology movement. And, and, and the reasons why I find myself easily plugged into that because one, it creates a lot of interaction that I learn from. It creates a lot of collaboration that I learn from. So there is that personal incentive built into that that also fit my day-to-day -day work and day-to-day -day jobs. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to afford doing it. Uh, so there must be that alignment in place and it must be something that is beyond a technology that actually can justify an effort over, you know, pretty occupied in, in the day-to-day -day job that will justify it because it actually contributes back all the time. And that's kind of, for me, the, the, the type of things. The other thing is that in Israel, which is a small community, uh, small but very lively community, it's, uh, it's something that we found that uh, in, in some cases requires that initial ignition to actually get people aware of things, but once you've done that, there is a, a tremendous wave that is coming back, which is uh, very rewarding anyway. So that's, that's kind of the balance that I found. I, th I think for me, uh, that is actually quite simple. You know, uh, we're lucky enough to live in Silicon Valley. You know, if you want to learn something, you can usually drive about, I don't know, a mile and find someone who may have invented the technology. Um, myself, I grew up in a small farm town. Um, and when Linux first came out in the 90s, 
you know, I had I remember getting the stack of floppy disks and, and just having no clue. I ran ISP. This couldn't really import to me. Just couldn't get past that technical barrier of understanding and implementing a, 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 a an operating system, a platform that fundamentally changed our industry. Um, how we address that, that that challenge is a bunch of us got together and started doing install fest. We shared that burden of learning, of sharing knowledge. Uh, we improved our own situations in our company's platforms. Um, I think there's a very close parallel to that in the journey that we've been going through with OpenStack over the past couple of years. And the user groups and communities are a way that we can help each other grow. We can increase the value of OpenStack by increasing the consumption and contribution. Um, and is very effective. It is, is, and it's a way that you can both give back and help others, but also, you know, there are self-serving aspects to it. You know, you learn when you're teaching, you know, when you're learning with others and by connecting with others, there's value to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for, for m me, it was really two things. One was, um, I mean, frankly, at the point when we started looking at, at forming the meetup, um, documentation was scarce and not of awesome quality when it comes to uh, OpenStack fundamentals for non-developers and how to implement for enterprises. And that's my entire world uh, at Cisco is OpenStack deployment for enterprises. So I, I did it as a means to not only, you know, help other people that I knew in the community and, and try to bring more interest and awareness for OpenStack, but to also help uh, my, you know, my own learning uh, of what the use cases might be, what the challenge points would be from an OpenStack perspective, and for us to use that as, as kind of a, a plan of record, if you will, to, to better uh, facilitate documentation or you know, presentations or recordings or demonstrations and really kind of fine tune what those things would be uh, you know, most useful for specifically in the enterprise. And then the second part is, um, I just think what, it, you know, what everyone else has said is, you know, just get the word out of what is OpenStack um, what can it mean to you? What would you use it for? And to try to bring people who are, are maybe uh, not accustomed, even though they're open source users, they're not accustomed to participating bidirectionally in an open source community, right? And that, that is in, incredibly uh, critical to the success of any open source project, especially OpenStack. And I think that, you know, the speed of adoption of OpenStack and the pace of its development um, is, is primarily attributed to uh, the wealth of diversity around the open source communication and, and or the community, right? And I, and I think that, um, you know, Scott and I saw an opportunity for the immense number of developers, vendors, um, and end users in our area uh, to be able to give them that form to participate and to receive information. Yeah, so for me, I think it, it was really about, there, there was this great project called OpenStack and, and everyone was talking about it, and, and effectively, I just wanted to bring that to, to the Midwest. I wanted to allow people a forum to share information about it, to learn from each other, and to participate in this, because a lot of people don't know how to participate in this, so this provides them a forum for participation. And hopefully what it does is it allows them to grow, and maybe we'll see more Midwest OpenStack user groups, because we, we get people not just from Minnesota, we get people from the Dakotas as well, from, from Iowa, from Wisconsin. Uh, we get people from all over up there, so... Mostly it's about enablement for me, allowing other people to grow and allowing them to grow with OpenStack. Um, so that's what it's about. Cool. Well, just to ensure that everyone in the audience is uh, still staying awake, can we have a question from the audience? Anyone? Hi, uh, my name is Sai. I came from Singapore. Actually, I knew about OpenStack um, from a YouTube video the, the video title is The Bird of the Cloud from the Rack Space and NASA. And I don't know what is it, and I kind of like interested, and I came here. Uh, before I came here, I want to know, I, I fly to the uh, US to attend a 3 days boot camp from Mirandis, and I totally knew, and I came here to find out. So the, um, what I realized is in, in from Singapore, um, I, didn't, I didn't aware that there are much people knowing about what is OpenStack. And uh, now I know a little bit about OpenStack, and w then I want to, you know, like con um, talk to the people that, uh, you know, about the OpenStack. Then the, I realized, I asked myself, and um, I still cannot find out an answer when the people ask me why we need to do this OpenStack and why we why we need to use what is benefits, and they will ask uh, one question is like. 
um, which business is already using OpenStack in Singapore? Because even the, no, no business, if none of the business is using this technology, the technology will not be successful. So technology just depends on the business, right? So um, I would like to ask the questions that, um, how do you foresee the OpenStack deployment in the, uh, you know, uh, this Asia, uh, Southeast Asia? And, um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's a quick, that question. So, so I, I don't know if I can directly answer the question about deployments in Southeast Asia, but, but I mean, from my perspective and what I see, at least in the Midwest, is I see people that initially were deploying it perhaps for their developers, um, so they deployed maybe a small OpenStack cluster for their developers to use. Maybe they had experience with Amazon or, or that type of development model, that type of cloud. But now what you see is after they've done that, you fast forward six months, nine months, maybe 12 months, now you see that they're deploying even more OpenStack and all of their, a lot of their future infrastructure is like that. Um, so there's, there's a lot of companies that are, that are going down that path because, because they like what it's able to provide them. Um, they, like, they like the features it has, I think, and they like the, the community around it as well, the, the support model they can get that way, that sort of stuff. So, so I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, if your question is how do you drive people that are in remote location to the US, and I think most of the forum here is in the US, which is very different than the way you drive things outside of the US, uh, because a lot of the case studies, a lot of the success stories that are in the US doesn't necessarily, uh, I would say, resonate, because it always looks big and far. Uh, and people find it easier to relate to things that are local to them, to, to people that face the same challenge that they do, uh, that they face the size that they have, uh, to justify something, because in the U.S. you might have an incentive to start newer, uh, with newer technology at earlier stage where it wouldn't justify the need in a smaller community that don't have the, the, the reasons for that. So the way I deal with that in, in Israel is that uh, obviously if we find someone local, then uh, we make the voice much harder, uh, much bigger. And, and we, lucky for us, when we started, we found someone like that actually by you know, discovering it by accident almost. Uh, which is a live person, which ended up actually presenting here after they presented in Israel. Uh, so we leverage that quite a bit. Uh, we also try to find not the PayPal and the big use, uh, case studies, but actually find case studies that are smaller, even around Europe or around the area that is relatively close and remote. Uh, so we try to find also those case studies and actually bring them in and not focus on the big one. Uh, which again was very successful and, and people find it to be uh, closer to them. And this year, we'll have five of them local. So we started only with one and a lot of remote. And now we have six that are all local. So it's kind of building itself, but you have to seed it to actually make it uh, run. And the locality is very important, as, as you rightly uh, pointed out. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, regardless of your geography around the world, people feel comfortable doing something when they know they're not the first. Right? I don't care what... what element of your life that's, you know, applicable to. It's just true across cultures, right? And I think one important factor for, uh, you know, for Scott and I, when we kind of review, you know, what is it that we're going to do in meetups and so forth? Is it always going to be, you know, some vendor who sponsors is now the person, you know, standing with the microphone? Um, I think what we've come to realize is that there's a lot of people that attend our meetups that are there for discovery of, you know, hey, what are the use cases? When should I start doing OpenStack that's above and beyond a development environment or a proof of concept? And so, you know, one thing that we're, we're uh, you know, going to be kicking off here soon is about every third meetup, we're actually going to have just a user-based session, which, uh, uh, you know, it could be one more lengthy use case from, a, from an enterprise account or a service provider account, or it could be four or five 20-minute long sessions, hey, I'm, you know, uh, Joe from whatever company, and this is what we are doing with OpenStack. And so when people see other people doing it and they are nodding their head, hey, that topology looks kind of like mine, and those are the types of apps that I would be using. It immediately helps other people uh, get get that kind of you know comfort zone about uh, progressing on, and and it, it expands from there. And so that's that's one way we approach that. And uh, I think one thing that <clears throat> let's kind of listen to everyone speak and okay, think about the uh, non-presenting side that's happened in SFA um, over the past year and a half. I remember a year and a half ago, or actually two years ago, started year and a half ago. I found a community to help to be part be a part of. 
Um, and it still is rather new. There still is not a lot of people doing it. And what you would see is You'd, you, people would talk to each other. Um, the guys from eBay, and on Saran, would talk about their OpenStack installs, right? Not, not presenting, but just you know, when you're hanging out, grabbing a, you know, drinking a beer, um, maybe before. Um, start bringing in people from other areas of the industry. Um, actually, the guy does SDN for PayPal, and we put in our first commit together. He was running, I think, Ethernet services for AdTran. So that personal connection, that starting with one, Right, and uh, Yahoo may have been the first one. I don't know who the first one, but you see this. You you create a personal connection with someone who's maintaining an infrastructure. Um, that that personal connection, sharing of knowledge of trust. You know, you, there's a lot of times you know call people up outside of the user, outside the user group schedules. You know, how do you remove risk from your install? How do you rem how do you how do you become comfortable getting getting your infrastructure up? Well, this, it, it doesn't happen every two weeks. Um, you're connecting to a wide variety of people, and you kind of get this. Um, uh, almost like a virus, right? You know, one person talks to two people, two people talk to four people, four people talk to, you can create 16, 16 people, whatever, right? And you end, up, you end up getting a critical mass through the connections that you create in your user community. I, I would just add one thing, uh, or maybe a couple quick things. So Yahoo's running a cluster, OpenStack cluster in Singapore. It's actually one or more active, so, but, um, so, that kind of stuff is going on. It's not very apparent because we don't necessarily um, shout it from the rooftops around Singapore that we're doing that or even around Sunnyvale. But um, there are a lot of people doing similar technology right around the corner from you. So um, the thing I would recommend to anybody, um, and, and we always try to improve this, is to um, participate in the OpenStack community. One of the ways is to participate, um, get on the OpenStack community mailing list and just put the question out. You know, I'm looking to talk about OpenStack because I'm just starting or I'm looking to do this kind of implementation. You might just find that maybe somebody knows somebody else right around the corner from you and you guys can meet at your local coffee shop or tea house or whatever and you know, it doesn't have to be, that can be the start of your local Singapore user group. It doesn't have to be too fancy. The, the stuff that we've done with, um, in Sunnyvale with the SF San Francisco Bay user group if we didn't make the effort to put the call out that we were doing something, it would die within probably a couple months just because people would, everyone's busy. So we just make the effort to just kind of put the word out, yeah, we're going to be meeting here. Whoever has the time, come show up. And it just, you know, keeps people filter in and out. We don't get the same people all the time, but we just keep it moving by having a, a, a repeated schedule that we announce. One thing on that regard is that, again, in, in remote location, mailing list, all the things that you're very much used to in the culture of, of the Silicon Valley are very different re in remotely. I think the, the sharing culture is relatively new elsewhere, definitely not at the scale that is in the Bay Area. And, and uh, the joining a mailing list is a huge barrier for people uh, remotely. Uh, it's not as simple as you may think. One thing that uh, we've tried right now, which is new and I'm hoping that will work, is that we've started podcasts, for example. So kind of creating a, a stimulation of the communication beyond events, beyond meetups, in between kind of things, so that there's going to be continuous kind of things. But the stimulation uh, is, is, is very important to actually get people to be aware of the mailing list. They've even wanted to join that because of the bear of the language, because of the bear of the skill set, the most shy, all those type of things. Again, that is that I found very, very different than when I'm coming to the Silicon Valley. It's like, you know, everyone just want to share, want to go to meetups, and you don't see that elsewhere. Understood. That is, that is true. And uh, with Singapore specifically, there is a, a Facebook group that's starting to attract some people, but uh, perhaps the organizers need some help to actually get meetups happening. So we can work on that later. Yep. Yeah, indeed. Excellent. So you guys can uh, take care later. Uh, was that a was that a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm from Indonesia. My name is Franz Tamura. I think uh, I think I'm already three years in OpenStack, and we have three Nova Life, and two is just selling retail like Rackspace and locally. And one of the biggest telco also using the Swift for their school management. I think uh, for creating a user group, we have to be patient, yeah, because uh, to educate the market, so the market will adopt it. And now I'm working with education, and hopefully, 
uh, I will use scene walk for the tutorial for the high school because my work is mostly in high school in OpenStack. So we create ecosystem and my experience with uh, Java user group, I think is it good if we can share based on region. So because uh, mostly of vendor like SP, Dell, is we cannot work together. We have to buy the server. Even we buy, we don't care about the open stack. If there is a, because the director of SP Cloud is my friend, so we cannot still work. I think if we can work together in regional base and especially from headquarter, ah, this is SP Cloud supporting open stack, and he make a letter to any HP enterprise all over the world. They will be help us because uh, the problem in Indonesia we cannot use their meeting room. But they sell open stack and they sell. They have their own community, so it's like a fighting. Indeed. I think uh, my yeah. I think I, this is a question. I think uh, so maybe if we, you I, can I organize, can make, I can make a question out of out of your comments, uh, yeah. which is, how can the user groups around the world help each other uh, in in all of these areas? We talked about sharing content before, but there are also other areas that user groups can potentially help each other, uh, such as. Just talking about the structure of the user group. How do you structure it versus new people, experienced people? How do you help other user groups in other countries even find meeting spaces or introduce people to make this stuff happen? Can I echo back something I thought I heard sure. you say? Was that the manufacturers were maintaining their own user group and not allowing cross-pollination? Was that your, your key concern? Yes? OK. I think that the, that's actually uh, worthy to ask. And I want to point out that. Um, technically, there are some blood competitors in the room right now that work together for a common goal of moving things forward. Um, uh, I would say blood competitors, uh, VMware and Cisco, right? Hyper competitors, out for the death, right? Um, and, and, and I'm not trying to you know, create drama, but what I want to highlight is that there's a personal connection between individuals. And one thing that I always believe, in, and I actually say a lot, Sean can vouch for it, put your badges away, guys, right? That we're here as a community. We want to go compete. We can wait from 9 to 5 Monday, Monday through Friday. We can go compete in the field. We can go you know, destroy each other in the market. But at the end of the day, we're a community. We're individuals. We may have paychecks that are given to us by others. And that's a really important, important thing. And from the top down in many of these, in many of, uh, many of these manufacturers, um, especially in the CTO organizations, there is a focus on moving technology forward collaboratively. Um, if stuff like that does happen, there's way, uh, especially if you're not allowed to join a meetup because it's hosted at a manufacturer, um, those issues can be dealt with. I, I think that's unacceptable, honestly. Indeed. So yeah, whenever we're doing meetup groups, we encourage people to take their corporate hats off and uh, become more community focused. But I'm not a speaker, you are. Usually they end up uh, as a competitor at some point. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> always uh, works in both directions as well. Competitors so are only say, competitors until the employees. Uh, yeah. the I think that kind of bring the vendor uh, sponsorship maybe uh, into, the, into the discussion. How do you deal with the quality of content versus biased content uh, that you still, when you find the community and you find events, someone needs to pay for the pizza and drinks, obviously. But also, if, if, the, if the event is bigger, then there is the venue cost, and there is more cost that you need to carry, and, and there are different ways in which you could deal with that. But usually, sponsorship is probably the easiest one to get funded. And, and with sponsorship comes the problem of biased content. And, and one of the ways, uh, traditionally, we didn't do a very good job on that, and we had a lot of uh, friction in that process. I think that what we found, certain tips that I can share at least, that made the balance much better. Uh, one is that we're focusing on the content before we actually go to sponsorship, knowing that if there is a good content, the sponsor will come and will still want to come. But then we kind of have enough stack of good content there that you, they would understand that it fits there. The other thing is the public voting, uh, so they could still submit talks and you kind of uh, tell them, here it's uh, do your job and if you'll be voted, then obviously you'll get in. So you kind of democratize the process even for, for sponsors and they accept that process, you kind of uh, make sure that you filter away things that are uh, potentially biased. Uh, the other thing is that uh, you do need to understand that someone who's putting money needs to know the ROI for that money. Uh, there's been different ways in which you give them a way to actually get the word out. 
uh, even if it's a vendor thing. So there was lighting talks or a specific vendor uh, slots for five minutes or something like that in which the sponsor can say his word. I know it's very common in meetups in, in the Silicon Valley and in, in the US. I think that's a very good balance. Uh, also, obviously, putting logos and other things uh, that gives them a way to actually get their word out because it's also important. Uh, they don't want to just sponsor for the sake of sponsorship. So they want to uh, see that you know, they're getting something out of that somehow. Uh, so it's important to keep that balance, and that was the thing, the voting, uh, the sharing, the other means that are not necessarily very biased content in the, uh, in the main speaking slot uh, was a good balance that we found. Dave, sure. Um, I'd, I'd like to add, I have a, um, make this quick, okay, uh, that uh, I have a, made a personal goal to myself to um, start a user group every quarter for the, at least the next year, and I think I can probably beat it, but I'm trying to... So we did start, um, started help collaboratively started a user group in, at CMU in Pittsburgh um, a couple weeks ago. Um, and, but I, I think that kind of uh, focusing on universities is a good neutral ground. We had a lot of um, uh, uh, commercial interests show up as well as um, probably about half of the students were, and, uh, and there were some teachers. Yes, uh, CMU, uh, Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's an excellent neutral ground, but also it's uh, one of the things that um, there, I know there's some uh, universities and students here, but I'd really like to increase the count because I think that's an untapped resource that we can make uh, um, really good use of. It. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, somewhat selfishly, that does tie into Colin, Colin and I's effort of uh, creating training documentation and, and finding consumers. but. Um, but it's a, a good, it seems to be a good uh, mechanism for getting a lot of different smart people together that have an uh, interest of OpenStack. So, and that might be the solution, part of the solution for what you were talking about is to find a local university that would be a good neutral ground. And then sponsorship is... Yeah, I was asking uh, who would be the target in the universities to actually target, because the university would be... Sure. So, um, so I'll use CMU as an example, yes. Carnegie Mellon. Um, so I'll make it real quick. So uh, the professors that are teaching theory and the, the guys that are building clusters for um, experiments. So those were the basically the guys there. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, both. Cool. Well, we've got about uh, two minutes left before this panel is scheduled to wrap up. Any closing remarks? Okay, so it was great to see the excitement around here. I think what we'd like to see is if people are interested in forming user groups or have more questions, as some of the people have said, there's a community mailing list. So definitely collaborate on that, uh, sign up for it, send questions. There's a lot of really smart people in the OpenStack community that would be more than willing to help you if you want to form your own group, if you'd like to collaborate with an existing group. So, so definitely reach out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, the, the feedback of, you know, is the community mailing list uh, good, you know, everywhere? Uh, that I don't know. Um, I, it seems to work pretty well for us. But, uh, but there's also, you know, many people on Twitter, you know, hashtag OpenStack and say, I would like to do this. And uh, you would probably be amazed by how many people would, uh, would really like to help you get, get started, whether that be just with the flow of a session, you know, how do you begin from a technical content perspective? How do you find sponsors? How do you identify locations and so and so forth? Uh, but I think there's plenty of help to be had out there. Just reach out. So if I have uh, any tips here or closing remark, I would say one, uh, if you want to build a community around OpenStack, one, you need to make sure that it's well balanced with your day-to-day -day job so that there's going to be, because it's going to be time consuming and you need to devote a lot of time for that. And if it doesn't fit your day-to-day -day job, then you wouldn't find that time eventually. Uh, the second thing is that there is a lot of uh, resources, both to get funded and to build a community site, websites, and other things. Lucky, I think, uh, a lot of those tools are not even, uh, doesn't necessarily cost. Uh, so we wouldn't be uh, sharing that right now, but as you said, the, uh, the mailing list and other resources would be a good place to find what others have found to be a good resources for building a community. So uh, we uh, have started streaming. Uh, we've done it at various times, uh, but we're initially we started off just trying to record and then publish to 
um, ser service. We've started streaming um, our meetups through uh, Hangout. Um, so everyone's welcome to participate. So Singapore, wherever you guys are, or right around the corner, if you just can't get away from your office, um, totally encourage you guys, everyone to co uh, contribute and get involved or just watch. But um, I'd encourage everyone that wants to um, be involved in, uh, if they're running a meetup, to do the same thing, to um, try to stream as much as possible, because that just makes it easier. Do you want to also plug the uh, meetup guide? You can back with you. The User group oh, you mean the how-to for user groups? Yeah. You're right. I, so there is, um, if you do a search for uh, OpenStack user group how-to, um, there's a, a pretty extensive list of how to set up a new meetup and how to run one. And we, um, it's uh, a collaborative effort about what we've done and our experiences. It's, it's pretty long and detailed, but um, there can be a lot of little details that will sneak up on you if you're running it. So I, I encourage you to check it out. And uh, the most important thing that I can share is that uh, teams span corporate boundaries. Um, a lot of times in the tech industry, we can be hyper-focused on corporate alignments, um, what we have an opportunity in the community to do. And I think what a lot of us have been very successful doing is focusing on the shared good, the shared common goal, and executing, ex executing for um, uh, the good of the community. And, and at the end of the day, that actually works. Well, uh, thank you very much for waking up so early after an extensive week of partying uh, to come to our panel on user groups. Uh, let's please thank our speakers one last time.